Hello everyone, it's me Jack from the Bloody Jack channel. Before we start the video, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And also don't forget the notifications bell at the start of the video so you guys will be up to date on every single upload I put up onto the channel. And don't forget to go in the description down below where you guys can find me on my Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter, and all that jazz. And without wasting any time than what I have already, let's get straight into playing some Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Alright, big PP Nation. We're starting off our new journey of Crash Bandicoot. Bandicoot. Just gotta double check I actually got all the gems and shit. Yep. 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 Cool. So it looks like we're gonna start a new world. <coughs> gonna get the thingy up on my phone. There we go. Yep, play level. Yeah, probably record for a couple hours and then, yeah. See how it goes. So where's the next mask? Not here. If these chuckle nuts weren't punching holes in reality, we could open our own rifts. Uh, for now, this we're embryo. stuck taking the long route. But I sense another rift around here somewhere. <laughs> Friends, I have a fun little game for you to play. I've got a reward for the clever bandicoots who can reach my testing grounds. But you'll have to defeat my deadly diabolical creations along the way. <laughs> Cool. Cool, fetus man. Neat. I'm invincible. Ooh. Yo, is that a fucking... Yo, that is a Ghibli reference. Okay. I'd fuck with that. I love Studio Ghibli. Aha, I thought you could outsmart me, game. Well, guess what? I'm too fucking stupid. Hmm. <laughs> First death already. Alright, so yeah, we made we officially made it to Japan. Ah, oh, shit, I forgot. You can't fucking get the um the flashback tape without you gotta reach the flashback tape without dying once. Alright, easy reset, easy reset.
Trying to create an infinite spin. I already balls it up due to my own incompetence. Always start with a fresh slate. Booga bar. Yep. Yep. Go double check for any crates and shit. Wow! So I'm pretty sure that's activated something. But I don't know what it is. Whoa. 
come on. No secrets, cool. I wish I didn't have to resort to live tests for my Bonus level. No. See, that's the trouble, because every single box has a purpose. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, uh, there's no fucking way I was gonna make that. Yeah, deserved. I will figure it out. Yep. Thought so.
Yeah, no, I balls that up, didn't I? Uh, I can't help but fuck it all up. Yep. It's a good thing it's only a bonus stage. I'm gonna get that. I'm not gonna get that death gem though. In this run. either. I might have to try and look this shit up how to do the bonus stage properly. Um, how the fuck am I going to do this properly? Because I need to know. I know there's a proper way of doing it, and I keep fucking it up. Luckily, it's in, this video is only a minute long, so. Alright. Well, then, I see how it fucking is. <laughs> Jesus. Nailed it. Shit. Dude, 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 dude. I didn't even jump. There we go. 
There we go, nailed it. <laughs> I'm so smart. <laughs> I am smart. <laughs> I can hear my cat, but I don't know where she is. See if this works. Yeah, bitches. Yeah, got all of them apart from the uh, three deaths or less gem. I'm proud of that. I am genuinely proud of that. All right, let's do the speed run. Let's do the speed run and get in the um, no deaths or less, or well, three deaths or less gem. Skip. Let's go. See, I'm not bothering with any of the boxes or any of that crap. He says as he destroys boxes. Gonna speed through this level. Alright. Fuck it, I'll take it. Come on. Build up that momentum. Alright, wait for it. There we go. I wish I didn't have to resort to live tests <laughs> for my experiments, but you know, harmless eggs. Secret power potions, marsupia. I mean, other animals. <laughs> Booga ball. Oh, shit. Alright, that was only one death. We still got a few more to go. Make that one more to go. <laughs> oh, 
Oh. Come on. There we go. Nailed it. There we go, got all the... We is getting there. Alright, let's try that flashback tape. Play the level, fuck it. There we go, haha. <laughs> Oof. There we go. Almost had it. Damn it.
Alright, so I just gotta be on the other side. Let's go! Woo! All right, Tona stage. Let's go. Hmm. Reminds me of Neo Nippon, minus the kaiju tanuki. There we go. Always got to make sure I use that camera function. How many bucks have I got yet? 175. That's not too bad then, I guess. Oh. Intuition. Oh, Kawaii. No, it is not Kawaii. I feel like the term Kawaii has just lost all meaning. Gem. Yeah, the gems got collected, which is good. Shit. Every time. It's my timing as well. well I've got to be careful with the timing. You got some of the plants that will go off automatically, but then you got some that will go off when you touch them. Ah, oh, fuck off! <laughs> ah, Kawaii. <laughs> yes. I'm just so glad that the uh, that the line does not get overly repeated, but yeah, like considering the fact that I've seen it used in mostly just in a cringy manner, that I feel like the word has just lost all meaning.
fuck happened then? It's like everything I had just lost con all connection. There we go. Sweet. Yoink. Alright, now let's hopefully not fuck it up this time. There we go. Oh, piss off! Are you planning to get the insanity perfect? Um, uh, maybe at some point. I might actually attempt it, but I feel like I'm gonna do the basic 100%ing first, like obviously just getting all the gems and beating the story and all that, and doing the platinum runs for um, the flashback tapes, but maybe at some, well, once I eventually do all that I will probably try and attempt to get the insanity relics at the same time as well. But probably want to get all the important stuff out of the way, so that way I know what to expect for like specific levels. So then that way it just makes it a bit easier then. I feel I'm going to be stuck on here for a little while. Yeah, that I end up do reaching my sanity peak. Like, am I good at this game? Far from it. It's like when people say that, oh yeah, it's the Dark Souls of platformers. No, it's just difficult, but half the time it does just require you to be patient. I got a bit further, so I'm proud of that. <laughs> I, I, I gotta take the small victories. Otherwise, it's just a non stop continuous cycle of L after L after L. Shit, I was a bit too close. I read that you can 100% it without insanely perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Plus it's Dark Souls of Memory Muscle. Yeah, that that is true, yeah. Like, Memory Muscle is also one of the major benefactors of it as well. Because when I live streamed Crash... Well, the Insane Crash Trilogy, I... Remember, I did the entirety of the first Crash Bandicoot, all just from memory muscle alone, mostly, because, well, it's because it was the first game I actually played on the PS1, and first game I ever played in general, so obviously the Crash series is, like, my bread and butter. Are you playing on, um, 100% in the... Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. I know I only beat the Crash Trilogy fairly recently. I think it was like probably only a few weeks ago I think I actually finished Crash 3 because then I remember I dedicated most of my time to trying to live stream the other stuff I've been trying to do at the moment like the Spyro Trilogy as well trying to 100% that and also along with um, playing some RPG well the only RPG I'm playing at the moment is One Piece Odyssey because I absolutely love One Piece. But it also comes to the thing of, um... I did Cortex Strikes Back. But to be fair, out of all of them, Cortex Strikes Back, I would say it was probably the easiest. Like, if we're talking like first time 100%ing, outside of Crash Bandicoot 1, because obviously with me having some experience with it, like previously, I can memorize like most of the details from the first game. 
But yeah, Cortex Strikes Back, I would say, is probably the easier one to 100%. That's mostly because I'm terrible at Crash 3, and I know some people would see um, Crash Warped as the easiest of the trilogy, but damn. The first one... <laughs> The funniest is too. The first one is ass. I hate it. I know a lot of people rip on the first one, mostly because obviously two and three perfect the controls and everything else on the side. I would say when it comes to the funniest Crash game, Twin Sanity, I think, is probably the funniest one. Well, that and also the cutscenes from Crash of the Titans, despite how much, yeah, Crash of the Titans is a terrible game. Um, but the, the cutscenes for it are just absolutely hilarious. The time trial in Warped is the challenge. Yeah, that is true, yeah. As someone that has done... Because I know there's like certain level When you go to... Um, what's that? It's in the main hub bit where you got those four... There's like four or five extra hidden levels, but you can only unlock them if you got a certain number of time relics. Honestly, trying to get those was an absolute bitch to do. Like, I wasn't trying to go for Platinum or anything, I just wanted to get the game to 100% and I was like, you know what, fuck yeah, that's good enough. Then do the extra challenge after unlocking everything in the game. Oh, finally, I did it! <laughs> I feel about time is funny. Yeah, um, so far with the cutscene, because I have not played this since it came out. But I've never 100%ed it though, that's, that, that's my major issue. But I do find that some of the cutscenes are pretty funny. And I will admit, I may not be a furry, but Torna's redesign I would say is probably my favourite. <laughs> But then again, I do blame everything on Twitter because of it. So I, I just remember it was like one of the few things I just kept getting tagged in. There were, like some of my friends were like, hey yo, you gotta check this shit out. And I was like, really? <laughs> Let's go. Oh shit. <laughs> I was too busy reading the comment. <laughs> You haven't finished it yet, I don't know what to spoil. No, I have finished the story, I just never 100%ed um, it. Oh. Yeah, I was just, I just never... Um, I've like, done the 100% run on, of Crash 3. Not 3, I'm um, Crash 4. Tauner is thick, yes. But, the, but it comes to the real question, who is thicker? Tauna Bandicoot or Laura from um, Spyro 2. Like the glow up she has after um, in the Ignite Reignited trilogy. Her dingo dial is the thickest and the prettiest. <laughs> oh yeah. We, we know that for sure. He is the absolute definition of um, dump truck. Like, he does not disappoint. Oh, fuck off. Come on. Out of those three... <laughs> <laughs> Damn! <laughs> oh, to be fair, I, well, I did a um, video not too long ago, well, which I was originally planning on releasing for like, either Valentine's Day or like a, in, whenever International Women's Day was going to be. But I remember I put out a video talking about who I think are the best female characters in fiction, just from like... The... I don't know, like, the aesthetic and, like, how, the attract, like, the attractiveness 
of it all from certain characters. And I definitely did put um, Crash 4 Tauner on there. <laughs> but considering the fact that it was like a combination of... Um, it, like, it was a combination of um, game characters and um, anime characters as well at the same time. Alright, let's see, do I have to do the thing again? No, so it's not here anymore, cool. <laughs> That's taboo. Like, yeah, it may be taboo for some. But for others, it's whatever rocks your boat. Yeah, because when I realised I missed like Valentine's Day by quite a bit and um, International Women's Day, I just turned around and I thought, you know what, fuck it, I might as well just release it anyway. So I remember I did have to cheat a little bit when it came to um, releasing the video. So now I was like, oh yeah, I'll try and put like one woman per franchise, but then when it came to it, I was like, yeah, nah, that ain't gonna happen. So I had to t bend my own rules a little, only slightly, because that way... Cause there's like some franchises where you got multiple women that are... Yeah, I had to bend my own rules by um, adding additional characters. Oh shit. <laughs> but for real, I like how everyone actually loves games sick of bad model characters. Yeah, yeah, I guess that is true. I, to be fair, I know very little about game design, so my opinion on that can be very uh, limited. But there were like some obvious choices in games that I just had to throw in there, like on my list. Cause it was like no particular order or anything, it was just like what I feel in general. So I ended up adding characters like um, Jill Valentine from the Resident Evil series. And then characters like Lady Demetresque from Resi 8. No, no, no. Um, Lady, actually, I can't remember if I added Lady D on there. But no, like, I added characters like uh, Cindy from. Yeah, Cindy from um, Final Fantasy 15. But yeah, it was like a combination of like random characters that I thought were just. Overall, like, bangable. Did I get them all? I think I got them all. But there's three missing. How? <laughs> Lady D is horrible. Why did you guys like here? <laughs> um, because then I added like other characters in the in the thingy as well. Like um, I ended up adding characters such as um. Like, you got some of the obvious ones, like you got Tifa Lock. Well, not Tifa Lockhart. I think Tifa Lockhart is like more too basic for Final Fantasy fans. But like, 
Aerith, on the other hand, I would say is probably way much more attractive than Tifa. But then you got characters such as, um... Well, obviously, Torn of Bandicoot and all that. Then you got, um... Well, I would say, like, just watch the video, like, then you can get, like, your my proper full-blown opinion. Because I did... But I didn't reach deep into the recess of my memory on half of this shit. <laughs> so I remember I did, like with some characters though, I did have to put multiple characters from a specific series in there. I just remember having a conversation with one of my friends about it, with um when I decided to add characters from My Hero Academia, one of my friends was like, Yo, Jack, don't do it, they're fucking children. I said, yeah, I ain't doing the fucking kids. Because most of them are basic as shit anyway. And if so, go ahead, call Chris Hansen, see if I give a shit. But now, like, now when it came to My Hero Academia characters, though, I added characters like, um, I like cartoony characters, so I can't really, so I can't really relate. But to be fair, I did add a couple, like, western animated characters as well. Like, I mostly had characters like Frankie Foster from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, for example. And that was, like, the definition of, like, early childhood crush for me. But, yeah, I... Well, I was lucky enough to actually add footage of said characters, though, so... Only so like, I wouldn't sound like the ramblings of a madman. Even though I'm pretty good at sounding insane already. There we go. Because, because, to be honest, though, when it came to like the idea of adding like the who I think would be like the most attractive characters in fiction, I did mostly get the idea from YouTuber. Well, one YouTuber in particular, um, Emirichu. It sounds fake as hell, but I try to remember if I had a crush on a cartoon character, but nothing. I mean, it is what it is, really. But then you got like some characters that are like known for being like attractive to most viewers like one major example I always normally get is um, like Hollywood from Cool World or Jessica Rabbit from Who Framed Roger Rabbit but you know some of the more obvious ones that people would know yeah which is odd yeah it is odd I, I will admit but it's like I don't really know how to explain it. I think it's like more like the like the fantasy like fantasizing about certain characters. So it's like the whole um attraction to um what's that? I get people from you know, from country from court yeah I get people Courtney gear from Ratchet and Clank well, I know one of my friends who um who I try to collaborate with every now and then whenever I we get the opportunity uh, told me that I should play Ratchet and Clank uh, Rift Apart, and he was like, yo, check out fucking Rivet, because she's so fucking cute and attractive, I'm like, bruh, nah. But then again, uh, I thought about it, and I was like, mm, I'll wait and see what Twitter says.
there's no doubt in denying it that some characters are just more fuckable than others. And I just realised I missed two boxes. Well, I've got the majority of them. I'll probably re I'll probably try and replay it later. I don't get the attractive part. I mean, I don't either, but I think sometimes with some people, it's probably to do with the personality of it all. <laughs> but she's adorable. Yeah, I mean, after actually looking at the cutscene, I've not played um, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart yet. I know it's on PC and stuff at the moment, so obviously I can have access to playing it. But... Yeah, like, I, I just not got around to it. I probably will enjoy it, because the last Ratchet & Clank game I remember playing was, um... What was it? A cr I think it's a Crack in Time? The one, that, one of the ones that was on the PS3? So I remember it was like the only PS3 game I ever actually like properly played from start to finish because my dad actually had a copy of it on his PS3 because I was more Xbox and Nintendo than PlayStation like when it came to it was mostly because like um, like yeah I had like the, a Nintendo Wii and a DS and all that but when I was like around 12-ish well between you know, like between the ages of like I want to say, like, probably around 9 to 11-ish. I... Like, most of my friends at school had Xbox. So, obviously, like, I started off as a PlayStation kid, though, because my first console was the PS1. Mostly because we, I was too poor enough to actually own anything else. Then we ended up getting a PS2 not long after they came out. But it was like a couple, I think it was like a couple years after the PS2 came out, we ended up getting one. Because obviously with it being the highest selling game console of all time still, because it was the, like it was cheaper than getting a DVD player at the time, somehow. But the fans love it. Yeah, that is true. But yeah, like I started off mostly as a, PS1 kid, but then I ended up like falling more towards like you no, know, I'll casually play like the odd Nintendo game here and there. It's like um, my one of my cousins actually had a GameCube, and I always like, I always wanted to get a GameCube myself, mostly because one of my favorite designed Legend of Zelda games is on there, uh, the Wind Waker, and that's also because I'm just a sucker for pirate shit. Like, in general. So. <laughs> but yeah, like, I, like, when it comes to owning game consoles, though, like, I mean, even now, as an adult, who should ideally be able to afford stuff that they want now, because I work. But I'm still poor, so I can't have most of the console. Pirates are cool. Yes, they are. It's like when I had to win my dad over on watching One Piece. I was like, nah, dad, trust. This shit's actually good. And I got him to watch the live action series on Netflix. And then the fact that I now got him hooked onto One Piece, because he's now like hyped up for season two. Because <laughs> my dad is like not a big anime fan. And I was like, nah, trust me. <laughs> it's like one of those things where you. You have to try and rely on your own opinion to try and get someone like, to win them over on it. Yeah, most people aren't. Yeah, I know most people aren't like anime fans, which I, I completely understand. Like some people would say they don't like the aesthetic, they don't like the art style or anything like that. Like it's usually like you know, standard opinions like that, which I completely get. But my philosophy is, I always feel like there's always one thing in a specific genre that everyone's going to like. Like, for example, I'm not really big on romance stories, but when I... But there are, like, a few romance movies that I actually... Like, rom-coms I actually do genuinely like. For example, um... Chasing Amy, because I... Well, not, mostly because I'm a Kevin Smith fan, but also, like, Chasing Amy, objectively, is an alright movie. 
So like my philosophy is like it's like um yeah like when it comes to anime I do feel like there is at least one anime movie or show that most people would like. It's the type of storytelling that drove people away from anime. Yeah, I mean, that I do also kind of get. So I know one of the people I used to work with, she is not a big anime fan, but then I did show... So I got her to watch the live-action One Piece because she asked me if it was actually any good, and I went, yeah, I mean, it, it adapts, like, the first 12-ish volumes of the manga, but it also, like... I would say it's probably a lot easier to watch than the, um... Yeah, I'd say it's probably a lot easier to watch than the anime. Because <laughs> with the amount of stuff they adapted in the, in the live action series on Netflix... Yeah, they go through not only the 12... the first 12 volumes of the manga, but they also managed to go through, um... I think it was like the first 60-ish episodes of the anime. Because obviously One Piece is like known for how long it is. And it's still going. But yeah, like, she tried watching One Piece, like, the One Piece anime after watching the first couple episodes of the live-action series. And she said she couldn't get into the art style, but then she asked, like, for more recommendations, because she said she... It was, like, one of those things that she would, wouldn't mind giving a try. I mean, I've got to give him props for that, really. A Western storytelling depends on small stories, and the characters get changed and evolve. Yeah, I mean, some anime characters also do get that same treatment. But then again, like like you uh, said before, it mostly depends on the storytelling itself. I feel like there is something mi there is a yeah thought thought it would be about there Next was it I did manage to get her into watching one anime which was um, like an obvious personal favorite of mine um, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure because well <laughs> It is genuinely that good, but I know like a lot of people are turned off from like the first part of the series. Because I know like part one, because it's all split into parts, because it's not specifically seasons. It's more spread across the, the whole fact that the story is told in parts. In the Japanese are opposite, a big journey and the characters evolve along with the story. Yeah, that is true. Uh, Jojo is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and the other Jojos are side characters. I mean, that's one way to put it. I mean, Jotaro is the more, um, iconic character in the series. Like, compared to the other, um, Jojos. Actually, I'm going to try and see if I can attempt those last two, um... Yeah, those last two gems again. So I know, at the moment, on the ch well, on my YouTube channel, I have mostly done... Not only like these Twitch streams that I've put on there, but also. Me of Neo Minus the Kaiju oh shit. Nope. Jotaro <laughs> is the best. Yeah, he is. 
there, there is no denying that Jotaro is like the best, well he's like one of the best Jojos, considering the fact that he's like the poster child for the series. But I know like obviously like there are the odd cases where the Jobro is more interesting than the Jojo themselves, like for example like um, Bruno Butcherati in Jojo Part 5, who's just a hundred times more interesting than Giorno himself. Or like in um, part 7, when it eventually gets, yeah when part 7 eventually gets an anime adaptation. Yeah, <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> wow, you, you really hate Bruno Butcherati? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but like, when, uh, when we get um, Jojo part 7, the, the other Joe brother we're gonna get, Gyro Zeppeli. He is like way much more interesting than Johnny Joestar. Like the only savoring aspect of Johnny in Part Seven is the fact that he. This was I think he's like the first JoJo that's like I think he's put like full blown American. Unlike the other JoJos who either been a combination of like different nationalities or just English. No, like, yeah, Gyro Zeppeli, like, he, he's an absolute chad. Yeah, G yeah, Gyro Zeppeli is, like, absolutely god tier. And to be fair, like, part 7, I would say it's on the almost on the same tier of being as good as, like, part 2. But then again, I am very biased towards part 2 because it is, like, my favourite part of JoJo. I am excited for Johnny. The explosive, because I think he's also like the first, um... Yeah, like he's the first physically disabled Jojo as well. But also I do give, um... Part 7 praise because of the fact... Or only because of the fact that... They admit that Jesus Christ himself... Is like a proper character in the series. <laughs> but also the fact that we get treated to three different versions of Dio. As well. In part, yeah, we get like three. Yeah, like theoretically, there's three different Dios in part seven. Because we got Diego Brando, who's just British Dio, but he's a horse jockey. Then you got his stand, um, Scary Monsters, which allows him to turn into a dinosaur. And he can also create like mini dinosaurs as well. And then we've got United States President Dio, Funny Valentine. But at the moment, there are rumors that a part seven anime is in development because of what happened on Twitter. Because one of the lead animators for part six turned around and um, released. So it was like just standard stock footage of a woman riding a horse. And he basically turned around and was like... So I remember the day he put up the post, he deleted it a couple hours later because everyone started screenshotting it and fucking sharing it. It was like, hey yo, part 7 has now been announced! <laughs> it's like, no it hasn't. We're just waiting to actually officially... Like, if when it eventually does get announced, the one thing I hope is, like, I wouldn't mind it being put on Netflix just like part 6, but I really hope Netflix wouldn't balls it up like they did with um, part 6's release schedule. Like they could do the same thing with um, other shows that they've done, like releasing it on a weekly schedule. Like they done it with um, Vinland Saga, which was fine. They did it with Riverdale, which was fine. But then, with Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, like, I would have been fine if it was weekly releases, because it still aired on TV in Japan. But then, I also would have been fine if they did, like, you know, the first half, wait for the Japanese broadcast to catch up, and then try again. <clears throat> but instead, they released it in three separate batches, which kind of took the piss a little bit. Oh. 
But I know like some show, but I binge watch everything. To be fair, I only binge watch when I've got the time. Like for example, at the moment, the so I'm trying to. I've spent the past like few weeks trying to catch up on animes that I've. I kept saying to myself I would watch, but then it's more of a case of trying to find the time to get around to it. It's like at the moment I'm re like I'm binge watching through um, My Hero Academia because I know season seven just started, but I haven't fully caught up to the series yet. Or like with um, Jujutsu Kaisen because everyone in my friend group was like, "Oh yeah, you got to check it out. It's like possibly one of the greatest shonen to come out in the past few years." And I thought, "Really?" Watched the first episode and I was like, "This is literally just Chainsaw Man, but edgy." Well, more edgy than what Chainsaw Man already was. Oh. But yeah, like, so I remember I took some time off work for my birthday. And so I took like a good couple weeks off. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try and utilize as much of this time as I possibly can. Mostly to just try and watch as much anime as possible. But I did manage to catch up with most of like all the main stuff. Like One Piece, I haven't watched it for two years, so I can have multiple episodes, like 300 or something, to watch. Yeah, I mean, I'm mostly caught up with One Piece. I know I've got the odd episode to go. Right, yeah, i still got, like, the odd episode to go, but... I most When it comes to stuff like One Piece, though, I mostly prefer the manga, because I do feel like the pacing is a lot better. There we go. But now, like, I am also excited for the like the next season of um, the live-action One Piece as well. At the same time, because I I feel like everyone in that live-action series actually did a really good job adapting what they can, considering the fact that they only did like the East Blue arc, and we also got the recent confirmation that they're going to be filming seasons two and three back to back as well. And the main big anime is... Wait for the later season. You never liked it? Really? Like, I feel like when it comes to like the subject of live action adaptations of anime, there can be good ones made. Like, depending on how well you can actually adapt the source material. Like, for example, you got the, um... Like, when it comes in terms of good live-action adaptations of anime, I would say you got ones like Speed Racer, which adapts the original anime from the 60s to a T. But then you got ones like, um... Also, Elite Battle Angel, which adapts the OVA series, because it never got a proper, full-blown anime adaptation. Uh, but it mostly adapts, like, part of the manga. The source material is expected, so why bother? Uh, that is true, but then also, like, you got other examples as well of a good adaptation of an anime. Well, not anime, but, like, of manga. You got, um... Euphoria as well, which is loosely based on a manga. Um, all they did really was change the names of some of the characters and um, the location of it. And then it's the same with um, that Tom Cruise movie as well, Edge of Tomorrow, which is also based on a manga. But the manga's cool. But I think all they did with um, Edge of Tomorrow, all they did was really just change the title of it.
I like improvement, like Helsing Ultimate. How they get rid of the filter. Yeah, I mean, Helsing Ultimate. Well, no, the thing with Helsing Ultimate, though, to be fair, that's an anime I would love to see a live action adaptation of. Um, but. The, the trouble with Helsing Ultimate was the reason why you got that version and you got the OVA series is. Well, just like Full Metal Alchemist, it was not entirely finished. Um, obviously with the whole idea of OVAs in the first place, but yeah. But yeah, like obviously you got some which are an improvement over the source material. Like for example, uh, Full Metal Alchemist. You got the anime from the early 2000s, but then you also got Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood as well. Which I would argue is probably a slight improvement over the anime. But, but yeah, like, there are a few animes that I will hands down admit that I would love to see done proper in live action. Because I do feel like there are some potential. Yeah, like, there is some potential of it happening. Like, Helsing obviously being a big one for me, because I love the Helsing manga so much. Like, the only thing I feel like they could probably get rid of, in my opinion... I know it's the one thing that the hell that whole thing Ultimate added, which was the... Was it? It's like those little cartoonish moments with Ceres. Where she... Where the art style just com takes a complete 180 turn anyway, like in both the manga and in Helsing Ultimate. Like, she never did it in the OVA series, because I think the OVA series was supposed to be, like, way more serious. But yeah, like, certain... I do feel like there are some live-action adaptations of anime can be done right. You just gotta... It, it just depends on the source material itself. Like, if it's adaptable, go for it. If not, then probably leave it as it is. Like, there are some that I know for a fact that will never get adapt like, a proper adaptation that we deserve. Like, Berserk, for example. No matter how many times they'll try and adapt to the anime, it's never gonna happen. Like, I would absolutely kill for a proper adaptation of um, Berserk. Also, animation is a superior media. That is true. But yeah, like I said with uh, Berserk, like I feel like there is no possible way for a proper anime adaptation of Berserk. Because... <clears throat> I don't know, like, the only way I can ever imagine a proper adaptation we'd get of Berserk well, is if they... Um, the Minus the kaiju to yeah, is if they do like a proper... like They, they have to leave it all uncensored. No, like, if they did an anim like a proper anime adaptation of Berserk, I would love to see it happen. <clears throat> so I know there's been th uh, technically three adaptate like anime adaptations of Berserk. I say technically, no, there actually is three adaptations of like three anime adaptations of Berserk. Um, you got the OVA series from the '90s, which is good, but then obviously with where the manga was at the time, there was only so much they actually could work with. Um, but then you got the Golden Age arc trilogy of movies which they did, which was okay. <clears throat> and then you got the 2016 series which is like all kinds of bad. And when they released it on Blu-ray, like obviously when they release an anime on Blu-ray, or on DVD, they try and, uh, well actually no, when it gets released on DVD, they'll basically just use a recording of the TV, you know, like the TV version, whereas when they release it on Blu-ray, they actually try and improve the animation so ever so slightly. <clears throat> but whereas with Berserk, they somehow made it worse when they released it on Blu-ray. <laughs> Because that 2016 series was absolutely awful. You and I have different tastes in entertainment. I, I'll, I'll, when it comes to picking and choosing like entertainment, 
Like, yeah, I will admit, I am full-blown weeb. Like, uh, uh, no shame whatsoever. Like, no shame on it whatsoever. <laughs> and, um, but no, like, there are, well, I will admit as well, I know there's some anime I am looking forward to at the moment when it eventually comes out. Like, I'm waiting on um, Netflix's adaptation of Devil May Cry, because it's being adapted by the same guy who did the Castlevania Netflix series. And I absolutely fell to pieces after watching that. Like, it was so good. But I know we also got the Tomb Raider anime, which is supposed to be coming out in a couple months. I, I think it's a couple months. It's either in a couple months or it's, like, coming very close to its release. So I know Netflix have been doing all right with their anime adaptations. Like they did one of um, Cyberpunk, which was pretty damn good. Um, then they did one of... Well, obviously they did um, uh, Gamera. So I, I like my kaiju stuff every now and then. Like if I see a good kaiju movie, I'll, I'm going to watch it. Well, more of a casual, you know, turn your brain off, have some good fun and shit. Also, Blue Eye Samurai is good. I've been told it's really good, but I, I've not got around to watch it. I know it's on my watch list right now. Um, but I also am waiting on, um, was it the final season of Beastars to come out? Because I know Netflix are doing that and they're splitting that into... I think they're splitting that only into two parts? Um, so I know that's going to have a fair amount of hype around it. Because they did say that it's going to be like the longest season of the entire franchise. It's like, yeah, because you only adapted like half of the manga. Um, but yeah, I know they recently put out a crossover anime of Baki and Kengen Ashura. I haven't watched Kengen Ashura yet, but I have watched every episode of Baki because I love the source material so much. Because it's basically like Jojo, but more exaggerated and gets rid of all the supernatural stuff. Um, but then I know you got also, um... I'm trying to think, what other animes I'm waiting on? I, I still haven't seen the Spy Family movie yet, because I've been told by a few people that have seen it that it is actually fantastic. So I know the Blu-ray and DVD is on pre-order at the moment. Not a fan of Baki. Yeah, I, I can admit, I know, like, Baki is not exactly for everyone, mostly because... I'll admit, I was a bit turned off at first when I... When I watched it initially, mostly because yeah, the character designs just looked horrifying. It's like you look at him and you just question to yourselves like, has the author even looked at another human being before? <laughs> but I do like how insane it actually does get. What made jo Jojo enjoyable was the supernatural stuff. Yeah, that is true. Like, I know like some people are very split when it comes to Hamon as a concept, but then obviously when it came to stands, obviously everyone jumped on that shit. But then obviously, I so I know they don't refer to stands directly in part seven, but I know they they do still have stands in part seven and onwards. I think it's like probably nearer to the end of part seven, I think they refer to stands as stands. But yeah, like, um... Like, um... Yeah, like, the only other animes I know of that's currently playing right now, though, that I'm trying to get around to watching. I know I've got My Hero Academia, which I need to catch up on. So I'm still on Season 7. Not 7, um, Season 6. So I've got that to look forward to. 
Uh, I also got like the newest season of uh, Demon Slayer to start watching as well. I'm just gonna skip that bonus level because <laughs> it's getting a bit out of hand for me. It's a bit difficult. Hey. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> I stopped at three. R really? You stopped at... Wait, of uh, My Hero Academia or of um, Demon Slayer? Because I know when it came to watching Demon Slayer for me, like, season one went really hard. Um, the train arc I wasn't that big on. Mostly because I watched the movie adaptation of it first. Oh, My Hero Academia. I initially dipped around season 5. Like, I didn't really want to care about the series afterwards, but then I was told like how good the manga actually gets afterwards. Um, so I know like the manga is almost hit its finish already. I know, like, everything gets a lot more fucked, like... Because, um, my friend Ethan is a big fan of My Hero Academia. I don't know what it is that attracts people to stuff like My Hero Academia. But... Like, Season 1 was good. Season 2 was alright. Uh, season 3, which I believe was the... Was it the sports tournament? <laughs> Just watch the first season, yeah. Because honestly, like, everything you need is only in season 1. Like, watch... I would say watch the movies at an extent. Or at least the first movie. So I know the first movie, um... My Hero Academia 2 Heroes. It's alright. Well, I don't mind it. They should have had a three seasons in My Hero Academia. Yeah, but considering the fact that how popular it was, I can't imagine them obviously turning around, but like, you know what, let's just drag this out as much as possible. So, but you got the, some anime and manga which do have like solid endings. Like, you got, um,. For example, well, I'm trying to think of a good example at least. <laughs> um, Full Metal Alchemist has a decent start, middle, and end. You got Devil Man. I would, I would say probably has a solid ending. That's the big problem with anime. Yeah, I, I know like some of it gets dragged out for the sake of like the popularity. It's like with. Um, Dragon Ball Z. Um, originally, yeah, originally the creator of the series, Akira Toriyama, wanted to end it around after the Cell Saga, and then obviously the popularity of Dragon Ball like increased insanely at that point, all because of the anime adaptation that existed at the time. So as a result of it, he ended up creating the Buu Saga. That's why I kind of burned out most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, I do get that, like, quite a lot. Like, it can just be, like, just too much when it comes to watching some shows. But then again, even live-action shows, like, I do find to be a little bit jarring sometimes. Like, on the odd occasion. Like, for example, um... Like, there are some live-action shows... I, I, could, I could probably just do fine without. Like, I, I didn't feel like we needed, um... Like, another Game of Thrones series. Um, House of the Dragons. Mostly because I, I just felt so disappointed with the ending of, um... The original Game of Thrones. Because <laughs> I know, like... The first couple seasons of Game of Thrones is, like, peak fiction. Yeah, same as Western TV shows. Yeah, exactly. 
like some TV shows, like you know, they they they, they know what they're doing. Like they 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 have an idea. Like there are some shows, obviously, that get unfortunately cancelled for reasons like um, lack of viewership or things like that. Like for example, um, the MTV adaptation of Spider Man. That was a really good series. And then it got cancelled after one season, because it was like a combination of reasons why it was cancelled. Um, because... One of the first few reasons was because the TV show was aired... Like, the episodes were aired out of order. And also the fact that you also had um, low viewer ratings as well, which obviously is a death sentence for most TV shows anyway. And then you got the... Um, the animation budget for it as well, like, M I think MTV refused to give the animation studio the budget they needed to do more seasons. <clears throat> I feel like Western family friendly shows can be the longest, but still enjoyable and fun. Yeah, that is true, like, obviously with, um, like with me being like a 2000s kid, but also growing up loving 90 reruns of 90s shows, like, you I grew up, like, I would argue you could probably call, like, the 90s and 2000s, like, the golden age of cartoons. Because, obviously, we had, like, so I was a Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network kid growing up. I couldn't watch Game of Thrones because of 18 plus. Oh, uh, damn, that, that really sucks. Because, um, like, the best way I can describe Game of Thrones, like, seasons one through four... Absolute perfect TV, like the, possibly the most perfect political drama ever. But then you got like, um, <clears throat> but yeah, like, like I was saying before, like the golden age of cartoons. Like, obviously, with me growing up being a Cartoon Network kid and a Nickelodeon kid, like we had shows like, obviously SpongeBob, which is now just being Nickelodeon's cash cow. Even after the death of um, Steven Hillenburg, which I still feel like they probably... Well, I do agree with a lot of Spongebob fans that they should have ended the show after three seasons. Because that was like the peak of Spongebob's comedy. Or even like with the uh, Spongebob movie. Like they could have ended it with the, um, the movie. I feel disgusted. Yeah, I completely get you on that. But then you got like other um, like golden like that era of cartoons as well. Like you got um, Ren and Stimpy, which thank God will never pass today. Especially with um, the creator of the series being blacklisted for all the um, the, the not so fun stuff that he uh, did. Um, but then you got like um, other stuff like. Um, Johnny Bravo, Powerpuff Girls, Samurai Jack, um, Cow and Chicken, <clears throat> Courage the Cowardly Doug, um, d not Doug, um, Dog, also Doug as well. <laughs> then like even, yeah, it, it's still fun. So like, even now with um, when I recently started paying for Paramount Plus, I, I, I didn't realize all about the Nickelodeon section they had on there. So I just ended up like spent weeks just binge watching stuff from my childhood and it's still as funny as I remember it being. Courage is the best animated series of all time. Yes it is. And to be fair, that was like one of the few things that actually got me into horror when I was younger. So I ended up watching like loads of horror movies and stuff afterwards, but see it was mostly a combination of that and watching stuff like um the old Goosebumps TV series, because I also was a big fan of the original Goosebumps books. But then as I got older, I obviously got into more horror stuff, like I got into loads of more horror movies, I got into um, like reading a little bit of Stephen King, um, but yeah, like it's just fantastic no matter how you look at it. But yeah, then you got like... Um, like, the arguably what most people would regard as like the worst era of Cartoon Network as well, which was the whole CN Real thing that they tried to do when they tried to incorporate loads of live action shows. Like, Build, Destroy. Yeah, it was, I think it was like Build, Destroy, Destroy, Build. I think it was. <laughs> I'm a pirate. 
Yar har, yar har. Um, but now, like, the extending, uh, well, that, that was like a, a few good cartoons in that same era of Cartoon Network as well. Like, you had um, Total Drama Island, which started, which was obviously like a godsend to make fun of um, Western TV shows. Mostly reality shows like um, like Survivor and things like that. Which we never really had Survivor in the UK, actually. But no, like growing up with like certain TV shows, like it, it, it's just it's just good to know that you, that it existed. No, I think it's the worst era. Is the 2012 that. <laughs> get goofy but not funny. Uh yeah, I guess, but in that same era of Cartoon Network as well, like, don't forget that we had, like, what some people will also try and class as the Cartoon Network Renaissance. Because you had stuff like Adventure Time, uh, Regular Show, Amazing World of Gumball, um, and stuff like that, really. I hate that era of reboot stuff. Yeah, also, there was also the era of um, rebooting shows as well. Like when they rebooted um, Powerpuff Girls, which I know a lot of people were pissed off about. <laughs> and then you got um, Teen Titans Go. I know some people liked Teen Titans Go. For me personally, I, 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 just, I just wasn't into it. But I know it was cool that they brought back the whole original cast as well. But damn. Like, they could have done a lot better than that. But then Nickelodeon also did some rebooted stuff as well. Like, they brought back um, Rocco's Modern Life as well on um, Netflix. And they also brought back Invader Zim as well. And that reboot of Rugrats wasn't really too bad either. Then you got the obvious cash grabs, like for example, um, Good Burger 2. Which, I love the original Good Burger because of how bad it actually is. But yeah, Good Burger 2, unfortunately, I, I feel like they probably left it a few years too late to do it. <laughs> the only great reboot was An Animaniacs and DuckTales. DuckTales, yes, definitely. Most I love David Tennant. As a, as a British person myself, <laughs> David Tennant, I feel like, was possibly the perfect casting for Scrooge McDuck. And we should have gotten him to voice Scrooge McDuck in Kingdom Hearts. He is, yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of David Tennant as well, I also do have another live action, to, well, Western. TV show I do need to catch up on as well. I need to catch up on the new Doctor Who as well because I watched like the first couple episodes of the new series and thought it was alright. Then I kind of dipped after another few episodes. So I know the new Doctor we got, um, Shuti Gatwa. He is actually pretty good. And I know one of my favourite excuses of um, not liking the show one of my friends pointed out, she said um, like she wanted to watch it but she said she found it a bit too British. Was it? I need to get on Star Wars animation. Yeah, I know some of the Star Wars animated stuff has been pretty good. Like, we had um, Star Wars Visions, which I've been told is really good. Because um, that was kind of like... Um, I don't know how to explain it. It was kind of like um, Love, Death and Robots. 
which that in itself was supposed to be like a like a tribute to movies such as um, heavy metal and things like that. Ah, shit. I feel like the new Doctor Who is just too political. Yeah, a lot of people have been saying that, all because, like, mostly because of the fact that I know a lot of people didn't like the new Doctor. But also, like, I don't know, I'm very split between about the new Doctor Who. Like, in the long run, I could probably enjoy it for what it is. But I still feel like you probably cannot beat like some of the older eras of Doctor Who. I really burn out this stuff. Yeah, so do I, honestly. A lot more than what actually needs to. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> excuse me. But no, like, but I also do feel like there are also some shows that very clearly overstay their welcome. Like, for the longest time, I felt like. Family Guy and The Simpsons kind of felt like they overstayed their welcome. It's like The Simpsons, it got bad for a while. I've not watched any like the newest seasons of um, The Simpsons. It's a real shame because I used to watch The Simpsons religiously growing up. Oh. But then you got like some shows which do manage to keep their relevancy. Like, for example, um, South Park. Some of the new South Park episodes are really oh, funny. Looks like that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> careful, yeah. <laughs> I'm being as careful as I can. See if it works. You have to listen to our future master. Nah, it'll be fine. There we go. Perfect. There we go. I love Cortex, he sounded like Brute was cheating on him. <laughs> yeah, it's just like Mr. Burns and Mr. Smithers. <laughs> the sexual chemistry between the pair of them is just too real. But no, like, to be fair, I also feel like some video game voice actors as well should get a bit more love in this, this game. So I can't remember who it is that voices Cortex in this game. So I know, I know in, I think it's one of the original series that he's voiced by Clancy Brown. Who overall is an amazing voice actor. He's like Mr. Krabs. Even though it did sound like a whole load of hoopla at one point. Huh. 
<laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I don't know. But I like, um... I also do know as well, um... Well, I know on my YouTube channel I'm also going to be recording a convention that I'm going to. And I know there are some other voice actors that I'm meeting at that convention. Um, like for example, uh, the woman who does the voice of Charlie in Has Been Hotel. Now I've not properly watched Has Been Hotel all the way through. Well, yeah, anyways, I know it's still on my Amazon Welch list. He, my favourite, Lex Lang. I've heard that name somewhere before, but... I'm trying to think. So I know I'm meeting um, a few voice actors at some point. So I know there was one convention I was supposed to go to, but I ended up not attending in the end, unfortunately. Mostly due to lack of funds, which is always fun. Because um, I know one of the voice actors that was there was the guy who does the voice of Yoshikage Kira in JoJo. And I forgot at one point that he actually also voices Wesker in the Resident Evil games. Not a fan of conventions. Yeah, I, I can understand they're not for everyone, especially if like you're um, like a not big fan of big crowds. Like that, I totally understand. But I know um, one of the other voice actors I'm meeting. Yeah, I'm meeting the woman who does the voice of Charlie in um, Has Been Hotel, and I'm also meeting uh, the woman who does the voice of Widowmaker in Overwatch. So I remember it made one of my friends jealous because we, me and quite a lot of my friends used to play Overwatch, like, I say religiously, more really, really, really competitively <laughs> in college. Well, I... Let me see, because it feels... Yeah. I feel like they get annoyed by hearing the same stuff. They probably do. It's like, um... Some of the few voice actors I want to meet at some point in conventions. I want to meet, um... Chris Sabat, because obviously he's like... THE voice actor when it comes to English dubs of anime. Like. Picture of like any of the best animes from my childhood, Chris Sabat has been in it. Like he voices like half the characters in Dragon Ball. You got um was it he plays Garabelt in Pantheon Stocking with Garabelt. Um he also voices um Vegeta in Dragon Ball. Uh Piccolo in Dragon Ball as well. All Might, My Hero Academia, like, so on and so forth. But also then you got, like, the big league, like, voice actors. Like, one of the obvious ones for other anime fans as well, such as myself. Um, Sean Shemmel, the guy who does the English voice of, um, of, uh, Goku in Dragon Ball. So obviously that's, like, my purest childhood right there. Um, but no, like, you also got, um, like, there, there is also, like, some voice actors in games as well that you, um, but I, I would also not mind meeting, because I know, you obviously, you got services like Cameo and things like that, but like, I would also like to meet, like, um, Tara Strong as well, because obviously, with all the voices that she's done in the past, it's great. <laughs> with him. Uh, I just want to say to Mr. Brown that he scared me when I was a kid. Yeah. 
uh, Clancy Brown do, does do that. <laughs> Especially when he does his Mr. Krabs voice. Actually, I feel like it probably might be another game I probably might try in 100%, even though I've already done it before, um... Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom, the re the remake of that. I don't know, may maybe I might try and live stream that at some point. But I know, like, um, Clancy Brown wasn't available to do the voice acting in that game as Mr. Krabs. But no, like, other, like, major voice actors I would also kill to meet. Um, John DiMaggio, because... Well, I'm a, I absolutely love Futurama, and Bender is like one of my favorite characters in um, Futurama, and also the fact that he voices Marcus Phoenix in Gears of War and Jake the Dog in Adventure Time. Other than the characters, I like the alien in Mega Sex LR. Oh shit! I forgot about Mega Sex LR. <laughs> Yo, that, that just brought back like a pantheon of memory. But yeah, like, um, yeah, like, yeah, John DiMaggio, obviously one of the bigger um, voice actors in cartoons. Um, Tara Strong, um, The fact that I'm trying to focus on this and also name voice actors off the top of my head. It's like, yo, are you gonna try and do it? <laughs> I don't remember the name of voice actors and I feel like, I feel bad because they're, they are the butter of the animation. Yeah, that is true. <clears throat> but it's then when you also get like live act, like actors that are more prominently known in live action to play, um, well, to voice characters in stuff, like with um, J.K. Simmons when he was in um, Invincible as Omni Man. Like, yeah, he kind of killed it, really. Like, he he owned that role. Like, no doubt. Nailed it. <laughs> First try. <laughs> I've heard much scary voice actors. Yeah, that is, that is true. Like there, there can be ones that are actually um, terrifying. That better be one sick. Oh, like Troy Baker. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right, well, I'm going to... Yeah, that is how you write his name, yeah. But yeah, I'm going to end the stream here. Um, well, because I realised what the time was, and i got to get ready and go to work. But, um, yeah, if you want to watch stuff on my YouTube channel, feel free to. Um, the link to that's in, the just, in my actual bio on my page. Um, but yeah, I will catch you in the next live stream. Alright everyone, I want to thank you all for getting to this end of the video. Uh, again, if you want to join the Big PP Nation, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell in case you guys can be up to date on everything I upload onto the channel. And also don't forget to go into the description down below, where you guys can find me on my Instagram, my Twitch, my Twitter, and the Facebook page as well. And also I'll be live streaming at least once a week. And if you missed the live stream, do not worry because it will be uploaded onto YouTube as soon as possible. And without further ado, I'll catch you all in the next video.